Hello everyone and welcome to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today we're going to look at one fatal mistake which many English learners make when they're learning. I'm not speaking about grammar, I'm speaking about the habit of learning. Let me explain. Most of us have people around us who may not know how to support us in our English language journey. In fact, we are barely able to support ourselves. You know what it's like. You go to the table, you lift your book, you look at it for 15-20 minutes, you realize that the words are bouncing off your head, bouncing off the ceiling, half an hour passes, you close the book, you walk away, you feel sad because you might remember one word, you may have written some examples, but you know that once you start cooking for the family, those words will be long gone. You have some English emails to send, you perhaps have some other tasks to do for your boss, and he's waiting for you to complete them. And this adds to the stress. Perhaps you may have children who just don't get learning English. Or you may have a husband or a wife who don't really understand what you're doing or why you're doing it. All of these factors are bubbling in the background. And then there's you alone with your books. You know that your husband or wife's attitude towards learning may be one of either waiting for you to fail, waiting for you to make dinner, or just not really understanding how you study, or even know perhaps why you're doing it. So these things mentally affect us because we know that there's things around us which are creating atmospheres of distrust. But how how do we solve that? What is the key? Well, the mistake that we usually make is that we lock ourselves away. We try to get away from people and we tend to build up this wall where we think, you know what, I'm not going to let anyone hear my English, especially not my husband, especially not my wife, and especially not my boss. And so what happens? Well, many of them come to italki or other platforms, book a lesson with a teacher, and this safe space is created for you to practice. That's all very good. That's wonderful. But there's just one thing wrong. A lesson once a week is not going to help you practice. So really what you have to do is to deal with the problem at hand. And that is building up an atmosphere of trust. And if you can't do that at home or in your workplace, where you're free to practice your English for whatever reason, then you can easily get a language exchange partner to practice with online. I've mentioned this before. People who lock themselves away in a room with a bunch of grammar books are always people who are the least successful in learning. Yes, they have the academic knowledge. Yes, they have a mind which looks like a dictionary, but they're not able to use the words that they know because they simply have no practice speaking. One hour with somebody practicing speaking is much better than half an hour, 45 minutes staring at a book where you're just accumulating words. And even then, without some kind of accountability, without some kind of support or help to practice them, you're really not going to remember them. So what I'm inviting you to do today is to come out of the prison, come into the light and let someone hear your English. Scary, isn't it? But, you know, when we think back to when we were children, 
we seemed to have an affirmation somehow that we don't have today. Children make mistakes. They say funny things. It's part of growing up. And in some environments in the world, which are very supportive, you're still allowed to make those mistakes. You're still allowed to get to that point where you're growing, but sometimes you fall along the way. I remember well when I started to learn Persian. First of all, the people around me really just didn't understand why. There were questions like, what? Why would you want to learn a language which isn't really used in the world? Why would you want to learn a language where a country is, is, is perhaps... Um, without relations of our home country and really why would you want to waste your time doing that when you could choose something like French or German and eventually work with that to make money and all of these opinions were kind of stacking up against me and even when I went to a bookshop to try to buy dictionaries or look on Amazon there was always this opinion that well why would you want to do that? Why would you want to learn this? And I was being judged. That's the first thing. And then the second thing, I think, was when I met family and friends, there was always this question, why Persian? And there was a kind of arrogance and sarcasm. So this mental barrier was building. And then it just got to a point that I didn't tell anyone. Um, that, I think really destroyed my confidence in the first few months of trying to learn because I could feel this mental barrier and even when I didn't feel it and I thought I was doing well this mental barrier was building so the only way for me to learn really was to talk to Persian people and that was great because I made loads of new friends all across Iran I learned that they're not quite as frightening as people tell me that they are or our media portray. And more importantly, I could spend half an hour helping them with English and they could help me with Persian. It's a lovely arrangement, talking to people every day. And that is so much better than trying to put my head into a book of rules, which I simply can't remember. Of course, you need some kind of guidance in the beginning. And for every language, there's always some things on YouTube you can look at to pick up the basics. Uh, for English, you can do a Duolingo course, for example. So these, these tools that you have are a good place to start, but you really, really must open up that prison door and begin to talk with people. Teacher, language partner, tutor, friend, language group. Scary, isn't it? I used to think that I attracted neurotic students because all of them were coming to me saying, you know what, I really have no confidence in speaking. And I thought, well, why would I attract neurotic students? I mean, I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is my advice for you today. If you are feeling that mental barrier, if you are feeling that there's an atmosphere around you which is trying to assassinate you mentally, whether that's a boss or a family member, then all you have to do is to change your study routine involving other people, other people who will be affirmative, who will be able to help you that you're doing well, and also encourage you to do more. They don't have to be teachers. Language exchange partners can be very, very helpful, but you have to lay down what you need. There's no point going to a language exchange partner and just waiting for them to teach you. You have to sometimes ask them or tell them what you want. You can tell them you want to practice speaking. You can ask them to check your writing. You can ask them to read something uh, or you can read something to them. You don't have to be afraid because they'll be just as vulnerable with your native language as well. So my advice today is really begin moving towards the window, let some light in, especially involving other 
people. It's really the only way that you're going to reach some kind of fluency. As for the family members uh, who may or may not be supportive, as for the boss who may or may not be supportive, these are other issues which need to be dealt with, but they don't need to be dealt with by packing up and leaving your husband. They can be dealt with simply by uh, noticing that that mental atmosphere that they have can easily be dissolved just by having a few quiet words with them, asking them to learn a new language or asking them to support you. Don't be afraid of that. Bring it up. There may be other reasons underneath there which is uh, perhaps causing the problem. Maybe it's not about language learning. Maybe it's about basic time, trust, you know, the things that we all have to go through. I often say that learning English is a little bit like a marriage. Some days are good, some days are bad. Some days you really, really don't want to be there. But it's the commitment that brings you back. It's that promise that you've made to continue studying that brings you back to the table in the same way with a marriage. It's the ring, the promises, the vows that you took at the ceremony which bring you back to the marriage. So it's, there's a lot of uh, metaphors there that you could look at, but be as honest and authentic with people as you can. And if you're not getting anywhere with that, I think maybe you should sit down and just really talk to the person concerned just to make sure that the ambience around you is clear and open for study. Well, I hope this helps and uh, I wish you all a wonderful day.